Today we're going to talk about the home office deductions and when can a therapist take it. My name is Tony Cameron with TLDR Accounting. We offer strategic tax and accounting services to therapists, small business owners, and individuals. Today, we're going to talk about something that's been on the top of everyone's mind, especially since a lot of therapists in private practice are pivoting towards telehealth, just given the pandemic and what is going on right now. And I've been getting some emails about, well, uh, what does it take to set up a home office at home and to be able to get a benefit for this come tax time? Since a lot of folks, they're not using their offices right now. They're not using their subleases. Instead, they're working out of their living rooms, their bedrooms, their kitchens and whatnot. So we're going to go over what's required to be able to take the deduction. Now, there are two big things to keep in mind. There are just two bars you need to hit for the home office deduction. The first is it has to be a 100% dedicated business space. The second is it needs to be exclusively and regularly used for business. So what does that mean? All right, business space, you're using it for business. Uh, your kitchen table, that is not 100% dedicated used for business because that is also your kitchen table, right? So you're also eating there, it's in your kitchen. It, it's really hard to justify that your kitchen table is space allocated towards a home office. Same with your living room couch. Say you're uh, doing video help, uh, video sessions, uh, maybe you're using VC, maybe you're using one of the online, other online platforms. You have a camera set up, it's directed to the corner of the couch in your living room. You don't have anyone else at home, so you, you're just doing your sessions in your living room. And that isn't 100% dedicated towards your business. So you would not be able to use it. Same with if you have a bar at your kitchen and you're, you're, you're doing your sessions on, uh, uh, on your Island that, that again is not hundred percent dedicated towards your business. Now, if you're like, okay, Tony, this doesn't count. What do I do now? Think about spaces where you could set up dedicated space. Maybe you have a second bedroom, maybe your master bedroom, there's a corner you can set up where the video doesn't show your bed, you know, your bed, or maybe in your living room on one corner, you can set up a desk, you can set up uh, your laptop, your video camera, depending on how you're doing it. And the thing you want to keep in mind is that space then can only be used for a business. So a big one I hear is if you're gaming and you have a gaming setup, right, for your PC, uh, can you use your desk for gaming and telehealth? Well, it's then not 100% dedicated to your business. So step one, the space needs to be dedicated to your business, 100%. Easy way to think about it is just cordon off the area in your apartment that you're gonna use if it's going to be uh, just, um, uh, a corner or, you know, a, a end of a bedroom or something like that. Uh, so that your video is only showing you, you just want to mark the space off that that is the space for your home office. The second part of this. So step one, you, you have a space, you have a corner in a bedroom, you have a corner in your living room, you have, you know, a desk, that's six foot by three foot. You have an area where your chair is. You have the space cordon off. Like it is your office space. Fantastic. Now you need to regularly use it. So that means that say you're just doing your telehealth there. Okay. It doesn't mean then that you're taking your laptop to your couch and you're typing up your client notes. That space needs to be your business space, right? So you, it needs to be regularly used and you can't just be using it, say once a month or whatnot. It, it needs to be the space that you're doing your work at. Uh, one of the questions that comes up a lot, what happens if you're in a non pandemic time and you're not offering telehealth, you are subleasing space to see clients I have a perfect example of this. I have someone, she's a part-time practice. She sees clients on Saturdays. She sees clients on Sundays. She's subleasing that space from another therapist. All she's doing in that space is seeing her clients. So she doesn't have like her laptop set up. She doesn't have any of that set up. All she does is she has her, her notebook. She goes in, she talks to her clients. 
uh, they check out. She has an online payment process, so she doesn't have to deal with billing uh, in the sublease space. All she's doing is literally seeing her clients. She's like, Johnny, can I take the home office deduction? Cause I have a home office at home. Uh, she has a second bedroom that's set up to do administration work, to do her bookkeeping, uh, to make sure she all of her billings correct. And she does it in the evenings. Um, and it's just for her business. I'm like, yes, that is a perfect example of where you're subleasing space to see clients, but you're still doing all of your administration work in a home office that is dedicated. You have a home office deduction. Uh, it's 100% dedicated to business space. You're regularly using it for your, your business. Now, how do you calculate that? So we're going to go back to the measuring that space out. So your desk is three by six, not three by six. Yeah, no, three by six. Uh, you have some space, you have a filing cabinet. You need to measure the square footage of your office compared to the rest of your apartment. So we'll need the square footage of your apartment or your house, and then we'll need the square footage of the space you're using for your business. So the dedicated office space. We will then use that come tax time to calculate your home office deduction. Cause it's not like you get to take a hundred percent of your rent or your mortgage or your utilities. Uh, you only get the percentage of space that you use for your home office. You don't get to take all of it. So one of the common mistakes we see is folks will be paying their home rent out of their business account, taking it on their profit and loss statement as a full deduction. And it's not a full deduction. They, it's prorated. So one of the things to be careful of, if you're like, yes, no, I have the space, Tony, I'm regularly using, it qualifies as a home business deduction. How do I record this in my books? Well, if, uh, if you're taking the home office deduction, we normally recommend you don't record it in your books until tax time because we figure out the calculation on your tax return because it gets reported to the IRS and we then know the expense. We can record it on your books and you're good to go. Uh, the other method, if you're like, whoa, 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 that sounds like a lot of work. Like I don't want to be keeping track of my rent payments, my utilities, all of this. There's a simplified method where once we have the square footage, uh, we can take $5 per square foot and then you go super simple. If you want to keep track of it that way, you know, exact, maybe you're using uh, 20 square feet times it by five. There's your deduction for the year. That's the simplified way to do it. And you can compare the two. So if say your rent's super cheap or uh, you don't have a ton of square footage and you, don't, you really don't want to mess with it too much, the simplified method versus the complex method, we do both on the tax return and we take the one that is the highest deduction. Now, if you have a mortgage and you have real estate taxes, if you're doing the home office deduction, you then don't get to also take those on schedule a. So the part that you're taking for the home office deduction, uh, will be subtracted out of the part you take from schedule a. So there, it does get a little more complex if you do own your own home and you're paying a mortgage and real estate taxes on it. Overall, the biggest thing to keep in mind here is be reasonable. So we had someone, uh, they had a super small studio apartment and, uh, they were working on Etsy and they were like 50% of my space is dedicated to my business. I was like, but you're married and it's you and your spouse. And it's a re it's like a 200 square foot apartment. I, that doesn't seem quite so reasonable. She's like, I have pictures, like it's dedicated. And so she documented that she had pictures that this was half of it was, uh, uh, dedicated towards her Etsy business. They didn't have a kitchen. It turns out their kitchen was a common room. Um, but yeah, so the biggest thing is to be reasonable. Uh, and make sure we document everything correct. As you know, document, document, document. So we want the square footage. If you have a floor plan because you're renting, uh, print out the floor plan, draw your, your office on it. Just save it to your files with a uh, 10 foot by five foot or whatever the dimensions are. Put it in your file. You're good to go. Take a picture of your home office once a year. Put it in your file. You're good to go. Like we want to make sure that that space that you're taking for the deduction is documented. It's reasonable and it follows the rules, which is 100% business use and exclusively and regularly used for business. Hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, I know a lot of times therapists normally aren't working from home, but given the current circumstances, a lot of people are. If you have any questions, let us know.